If there was ever an update that Capcom did extremely well, this past Fatalis update would be the first one I would think of. And that's saying a lot because they have done well on a number of updates. I remember being satisfied with the Raging Bracky and Furious Rajong update and giving them endless praise. This is a game that really hangs on the balance of its players feeling powerful. It hangs on a player going through the hell of hunting a new monster and saying, damn, that was worth it after they finally get that first slay. Now when we talk about the Fatalis update from weapons to armor, I really don't know if they could have done any better. So I guess that's a little bit of a spoiler because this horn is good, like really good. But if you want to hang around and hear just how good it is, Let's jump in and talk about the Fatalis Menace Whaler. So first we have to talk about the absolutely ridiculous stats on this horn. Now that raw attack that you're looking at is definitely not a typo. We're talking about a raw of 470 before we even implement a single skill into our build. That's very, very good. It has a decent bit of purple sharpness for us to work with, but I definitely wouldn't fault you if you threw in some handicraft or a sharp jewel just to give yourself a bit more comfort. I know I was rocking a single handicraft a majority of the time that I was using it and wasn't getting frustrated with sharpness management at all. Now we get to a wee bit of a problem, but when you look at the total picture, it's not as bad as it seems at face value. Now, if you're an OG sub of the channel, you know that absolute disdain that I have for the Deep Vero, aka the Savage Joe Horn. Why? Because it was slapped with an outrageous negative 30% affinity. Now you might think, well, the Fatalis Menace Whaler has negative 20% affinity. Why aren't you mad about that? Well, unlike the Savage Joe Horn, the Fatalis Whaler has an insane amount of raw attack and purple sharpness, a solid bit, to counterbalance that. Now once we get to the dragon, it's nothing that's going to make you jump for joy at 150. That's not what this horn is specifically for. This horn is just straight up smack the shit out of a monster regardless of its weakness kind of awesome. High Elder Seal is absolutely nothing we're ever going to shy away from, so there's another point for the Whaler. Now we come to the slots and I have to yet again say that this has not been photoshopped or altered in any way. Those two level 4 deco slots are as real as it gets. The amount of impact that these slots can have on your build is absolutely insane. Right off the bat you can slot in a Sonorous Plus deco to take care of that level 2 horn maestro you should be rocking at all time while you play the dudes. From there you have another level 4 deco slot to do with as you please. Now are you starting to see why that negative 20% really wasn't that big of a deal? There's just too much awesome radiating from this horn to even give that the time of day. Admittedly I will say that of all the attack up L song lists, this set isn't exactly my favorite, but don't take that as me trying to say it's bad in any way whatsoever. I'm just favorable to the song list that gives you extended health recovery and recovery speed for that extra bit of support. But when we get into the specific songs, we start with all melody effects extended. You can do some awesome synergy with other horn players using this. All of their beautiful buffs can be extended with a single play of a song. It's not a terribly long extension, but an extension nonetheless. And if you're a hunter that likes to have your palico use the orchestra equipment, those melodies can be extended as well. Next we come to Knocked Backs Negated. It's a pretty straightforward song and it's very clear just how useful it can be. For those who don't throw on that bit of flinch free, we got you. For those of you who are tired of getting flinched by Longsword, we got you. And honestly, taking away a monster's ability to get those cheap little knockbacks that send you on your butt is valuable enough on its own. Then, of course, we come to the Big Daddy, the Big Papa Attack Up L. Having this on a horn that already has 1470 raw attack speaks for itself, but we know just how much your fellow hunter will love you for it. It's the rally cry that every great sword and hammer user longs for. Another great thing about this song list is the versatility it presents with having both the Impact Echo Wave and Echo Wave Dragon songs in its arsenal. That versatility can really present you with some great opportunities for solid burst damage and even some knockouts. Now when we talk about the build, we're going to be using the Fatalis full set, because why not? It's incredible. And let me just harken back to how amazing Capcom did with this update. The armor set, from the set bonuses to the incredible slots and skills, is something to behold. They not only made the armor great, but they made it viable for such a wide array of weapons through the different skill variation between the beta and alpha sets. Alright, enough praising the gods at Capcom. When we dive into this build, the very first thing I wanted to do was alleviate that negative 20% affinity that's on the horn from base. There are a lot of ways you can go about doing this through skills and augments. I myself chose to go with this skill route. 
you have your usual components for affinity in Critical Eye and Weakness Exploit. Outside of those two core components, I decided to throw in good old Maximum Might Secret thanks to the two-piece set of the Almighty Fatalis Armor. Plus it gave me a reason to use a lot of these solid Mighty Decos that I have. So we have Crit Eye that gives us 40% affinity, and actually if you want to go with Crit Eye level 6, you can absolutely do that since we'll overcap on affinity by 10%. But after that we take Weakness Exploit in its final form to give us 50% affinity on tenderized parts. Maximum Might finally comes in to give us another 40% affinity when we have full stamina, and with the Maximum Might secret maxed out, we get that affinity the instant our stamina bar hits the max. For me, I love using Maximum Might with Hunting Horn. It's not a stamina heavy weapon, and there's plenty of horns that give you max stamina and recovery to synergize even better. Like I said, upon further review, you can actually go with Crit I6 and have a slight tweak to the build. Of course, we have Crit Boost maxed out, which is even easier to do with this set. Now that we finally have the affinity out of the way, this is where you truly get to make a build your own, especially with the flawless Fatalis Armor. Right from the start, we should talk about how the Beta Helmet gives you three levels of stun resistance. Such a clutch skill to have. Many people think of it as a crutch, but as we've gotten to experience with Fatalis, and even before him, sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you end up getting smacked around, stunned, and then carded. This build is one that I use pretty frequently against Fatalis in a group. In saying that, that is why you'll see maxed out wide range with our charm. I'll gladly sacrifice some extra damage if it means even negating a single cart or two. In cooperation with that friendship charm, I went ahead and capped out the free meal secret to bolster our stock of potions and other things. To go even further, I threw in some speed eating to speed up those heals on myself and my teammates. If you don't know, the four piece Fatalis set takes away the need for health boost three, so that's why you don't see it on the build. Do be careful because I think if you switch to another set that doesn't have the 4 piece bonus, this will go away. In this case, instead of using Mighty slash Vitality decos, I used Mighty slash Protection to give us some of that Heavenly Divine Blessing, which can also instantly negate a cart with how hard Fatalis hits. Now we get to the most fun that I have with this build, the sweet synergy of Evade Extender aka the greatest skill ever made, and Evade Window. Having Evade Extender on the Hunting Horn is a game changer in both the offensive sense and the defensive sense. You can instantly dodge and position yourself with the greatest of ease with that awesome extension to your roll distance. Speaking of that dodging, having a maxed out Evade Window in unison really takes your survivability to the next level by giving you a greater amount of frames to dodge through attacks. This can also be looked at as a crutch by some players, but again, I will absolutely take that over numerous cards that could have been prevented. If you've been around the channel for some time, you know that there's a special place in my heart for Evade Extender, and I will continue to preach its glory. Lastly, we throw in the Hornmeister skill because we don't want to be wasting precious time or windows for punishment because we're constantly having to reapply buffs through our songs. Now, like I said, this was a build I used in conjunction with other people that were specifically taking on Fatalis. Your build could look drastically different, and that's okay. You might want to jack up the attack with some Agitator, you might want to throw in some KO damage with Slugger Secret, or you could always throw in Part Breaker to break that precious head of Fatalis even faster and cool down those flames. All of those options are good and very much viable thanks to a horn and armor set with amazing slots and bonuses. Now, I feel like this is the part where myself and a lot of people might die diverge into different paths. I'm here to tell you that I'm a fan of the bass guitar. If a song has a funky bass groove, it's almost automatic that I'll love it. So for that reason, I dig the look of the Menace Wailer, but at the same time, I don't. I just don't like the fit for Fatalis. This is the biggest bad there will be in the game. I don't want his horn to look like a groovy bass guitar. I want it to look like something absolutely petrifying any time that I go on a hunt. This is probably the one spot that Elatrion's horn comes out on top in comparison. That design is gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of the whole meme weapon designs and this partially feels like that to me, mainly because of the monster this was designed for. I know it's not going to be a popular opinion, but it is what it is. I love the design, but at the same time I don't. So you know how I said I had a not so popular opinion on the look of the horn? Well that's probably not going to stop when we talk about the soundtrack either. Let's take a quick listen.
Now, don't get me wrong, the soundtrack itself isn't terrible, although I'm not a huge fan of using vocals on the horn soundtrack, but we have a bass guitar that is letting out orchestral vocals with a very slight hint of any kind of bass track. This is my overall problem with the design of the Menace Whaler. They want it to be a bass guitar with its look, but want it to be a badass, final boss, fear-inducing horn with the soundtrack. Instead of trying to dip their toes in both pools, I wish they would have just done a cannonball in one or the other. Make it a bass guitar with a hardcore, bass-slapping, Primus-esque soundtrack. Or make it a devious, powerful-looking horn with an orchestral vocal soundtrack that screams Final Battle vibes. I don't hate the look and sound by any means, but I definitely think they could have done better. If you're looking for a good bass track to mod in for the soundtrack, I'll have the roundabout mod in the description below. If you're looking for a horn that you can just throw together a single build and it do very impressive damage, regardless of what monster you're facing, look no further. This is a horn that has a very high ceiling, as well as a pretty impressively high floor. I think the lowest that I've seen it hit for was around 123 per hit on a spin, and that eventually went up to 144 with the right circumstance is met. This is a horn that is very much fitting for a final boss, if you will. The amount of work that had to be put in to take down Fatalis was very much met with a worthy reward. Let's be honest, that's pretty much the cycle of these tougher monsters. They first come out, people say it's way too hard and complain, we get time to figure out the ins and outs of the monster, we get that first takedown, then we get comfortable grinding them out. More so than any other monster, Fatalis was worth every bit of going through that cycle. This horn gives you a chance no matter who you're facing. A ridiculously high raw, combined with the Attack L song set, and solid purple sharpness, broods well. That high raw is only countered by a negative 20% affinity at base, which, with our vastly superior charm selection, we can easily balance that out. Remember how much I disliked the Savage Joe horn? Its raw didn't even compare to this horn, and it was instead weighed down by a negative 30% affinity at base. You get why I hated it now, right? But back to more important things. If we look at the Fatalis horn in totality, this thing is S tier with very little effort. You can have fun with the way you build it and still have solid damage being done. Combine that with the fact it gives you two whole level 4 decos and you have a horn that you'll be enjoying for a time to come. Even if you're the type that likes to min-max and pull out the most damage you can from it, this is a fantastic candidate for that too. I truly can't praise this thing enough. I will admit that it isn't without flaw for me, but these are just cosmetic gripes on my end. I don't love the fact that they took a little bit of the meme route with the design of the weapon and made it a base, mainly because the soundtrack is far from a base groove. I would have much rather had a monstrous looking horn to go along with the powerful orchestral vocals. The beauty of this is that I play on PC, so there's an abundance of talented modders that can help change the look and even the soundtrack. Don't fret though, console players, because your layered options are still great too. Grab one of the Zenogar horns and truly rock out with this destroyer of worlds. You can combine this with the otherworldly Fatalis armor to really feel like the true Black Dragon in every hunt. There's so much room to build the dream build you've always wanted. You want to go hard on the KO damage and fill up Slugger Secret? Easily done. But maybe you might want Agitator Secret instead. Done deal. You can go any route you want with your builds comfortably and without guilt because you just have so much raw power in your hands at all times with the Menace Whaler. I know that the Fatalis fight is tough and it's very easy to get burnout after a few rounds with randoms or even people that you play with frequently, but push through that, especially if you're a horn user. But that's going to be it for this one. It's very clear from the start just how powerful this horn is. I typically throw out a recommendation of whether you should make the mention horn in these videos and I can tell you that I not only recommend that you make the horn, but I cannot stress enough that it's vital that you make this horn. It's truly a one-size-fits-all horn that you can take into any hunt and be ready to make a solid impact. If you're looking for some battle-tested hunters that can help you topple the Black Dragon, regardless of what platform you play on, join our Discord at the link in the description below. If you liked the video, feel free to help me out and hit that thumbs up. Comment down below what you think of the Menace Whaler, the new Fatalis armor, or even the fight in general. I honestly think this update was without flaw and still can't believe that this was free. Subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already for more Monster Hunter, Iceborne, and other gaming content, streams, game reviews, and more. Dudes forever, have a good night, and happy hunting.